UI stuff. Hey everyone, welcome to episode three of my series on how to make an MMORTS in Unity. This video is going to be addressing, well, I'm sure you heard it from the intro and the title of the video, UI and UI states and all those goodies. So let's jump right in. We're going to want to start by making ourselves a UI manager script. Oh, and I've got quite the surprise for you once we get it open. Okay, actually I lied. It's kind of the same thing we did last time. We're going to start with an enum. This time it's going to be UI state. And we're going to have quite a bit more options in there. And this one will probably get added to a lot as we go. But to start, I'm using just the basic stuff. Main menu, interworld, single player, multiplayer, map editor, tutorial, create new map, in editor, in game. And those are the basics. Um, they should be self-explanatory. Then we're also going to do another enum though, and it will be UI type. And we'll have four of those, and they'll be very similar to our Kingdoms Manager enum for the game state, which is invalid, title, in editor, and in game. Now again, this next part is going to be very familiar since it's exactly what we did last time. There's really not much more to it. We're going to want a reference to our current UI state. So, you know, public UI state, current UI state, and also one for our current UI type. That way we can always check what our current type is, just like what we did in the Kingdoms Manager. And then we're going to want a reference to whatever current UI is on the screen. Because what we're going to end up doing is having prefabs that are basically the self-contained UI for that screen. There will be some things that stay and different things based on where you're at, but for the most part, everything that's going to be on screen will be in that prefab. Unless, you know, it's a common thing, like in the title screen, you might have one thing that stays. But aside from that, it'll just be a reference to a prefab that contains your whole menu or whatever you're doing. That way you can easily switch to it and you don't have any problems there. So I'm just quickly going to get rid of the update method because I'm not going to use it. You can leave it. We'll probably use it later, but right now I'm not using it. I'll leave start because we may end up using it. Um, but what we're going to do is, again, same as before, we're going to go to the UI, you know, UI manager dot go to UI state, just like kingdoms manager dot go to game state. Same setup. We kind of want them to mirror each other because they really shouldn't be different. It shouldn't be complicated. If you know one, you should really know a lot of the calls for the other. And that'll really simplify things. And so go to UI state. We pass in a UI state. And then we're going to do it just like before. We're going to check the current UI state and see if it equals the state that's passed in. If it does, there's no reason we should do anything because we're already where we want to be. Also, I'm wrong. Let's go ahead and get rid of start because it's, I don't think we're going to use it. We should be calling from the kingdoms manager. So let's not use start. Instead, we'll make clear UI. And in clear UI, we're going to basically, you know, it's going to clear out whatever UI is currently active. So whatever's on your screen for UI, it should clear all of that out because it'll clear that current UI game object as long as it's not null and that should really make it a much easier call so that we're not you know repeatedly destroying the game object calling it every different place we want one place we're going to do that now we can go ahead and add our clear ui call to the go to ui state call inside the current ui state does not equal state. So that way, you know, if it's not the same state, so we're moving states, we want to go ahead and clear the UI and move on from there. The next thing we're going to do actually involves dictionaries. So we actually don't want to have to drag each prefab into its place and do it for each menu. We should just be able to give the location of the prefab, move from there, and that way we can actually call each prefab just using that dictionary and you know based on its UI state and its UI type in this case we're going to do UI state for this dictionary and this will just make it so it's easy to grab prefabs it's we don't have to think of what did we call the name for that prefab or anything like that 
we just have to know the state associated with it. And so with that, we really should have a lot easier way of adding in more UIs. So let's say we want to add a new menu. The goal is so that when we add in a new menu, it's not a lot of work. It's very simple. We don't want to have to, you know, spend a lot of time on things like this, especially when we're talking about a project as large as an MMORTS. However, to load them from the screen, we actually have to use the resources folder. In Unity, the resources folder is kind of the only way you can go about doing that. I don't think that there's any other way unless you're going to be grabbing from the disk a specific place and you know the location, you know, a specific folder. Otherwise, you use the resources folder and you can find some information really if you just Google Unity resources folder you'll find a bunch of information that would explain it way better than I can but we're gonna put these in the resources folder and then we're gonna to want to make a new canvas and all of our UI will use this canvas unless it's a you know like in-game UI may be a bit different but all of our title screen UI everything like that will use this canvas and we want to set our render mode to screen space and our UI scale mode to scale with screen size and depending on what you're wanting to do these settings will be different you can copy mine if you'd like but yours may be a bit different depending on what you're targeting now we're going to want to get this all organized decently it doesn't matter too much but later on it could matter because if you start a mess now it's going to be bad later so i'm going to put the event system in the kingdoms manager and the ui canvas i'm going to make it its own folder. That's what I'm gonna do. And we'll put that in there. That way, you know, you know it's in prefabs, UI canvas. And then we want to go back to the UI manager. Actually, before we do that, we should probably go to the kingdoms manager and add a reference to our UI manager. That way we can access it whenever we need it as the kingdoms manager is kind of the parent of the UI manager. So it would make sense that it gets its own reference to it. Also for this script, we're actually going to use start. So we're going to go ahead and move it back up to the top because if it's at the top, you know, it's right there. It's the start. It really should be at the top because it's the first thing you're really doing. And that's how I like to organize them by kind of how often, etc. that kind of stuff goes on top. If you're using it like once and you added it way later, put it at the bottom. Actually, we're going to want to hold off on the reference to the UI manager as we've got quite a bit more to do before we get to all of that. So we're going to want to add the UI canvas actually into the scene as a child of the kingdoms manager. And then what we're going to want to do is add our UI canvas to the kingdoms manager instead of grabbing a reference at start we can just drag it over here oh well, first we have to actually add the script to the UI canvas then we can add it over here and then we can hop back over to the script move that line because we don't need it anymore and we can head back to the UI manager and actually get into the meat of all of it and actually get the UI loading in so that you know we can have a title screen you know, our game really needs to actually finally do something. We don't, you know, if you showed, showed this to someone, they'd just be like, uh, it doesn't really do anything. So that's our goal here. And to start it, we want to actually update our UI state because we're doing go to UI state, but we never actually change that to the current state. So we just do current UI state equals state. And that makes it pretty simple. Then the next thing we're going to want to do is actually set the UI state you know, the current UI, which will be current UI instantiate. Um, then we want to load from resources. That's why we use that resource folder. And I believe we put it in prefabs and then the UI folder. So that should work. And then, you know, we grab from our UI dictionary and plug our state into it. Then make sure we tell it, you know, it's of the type game object. And we'll also pass as game object and then just the transform of the current object, that way it becomes a child of it. That way it's right there as a child and we can keep track of it easier. 
So then we want to do the same thing we did with the UI manager in the kingdoms manager. We want to have a dictionary and get all of those things set up so that, you know, again, it's easier. We don't really want to have to use these prefabs like this. So we'll go ahead and make our dictionary. This first dictionary, though, what we're going to want to do is call it a game state dictionary, which basically it takes the game state and gives you a UI state. So let's say you're in the title. What would our UI state be in that case? Well, title is always going to be main menu. And so there will be kind of some defaults where, you know, if we're in the title, we're in the main menu or we're in this thing or that. Like, uh, you know, so right when you load the title, it loads the main menu because, you know, it's got to know what UI state you want to be in when you move to a game state. Because if you're coming from the game itself in the game, playing the game, you click to exit to main menu, you know, all you send it is a go to title, you know, go to game state title, and it will kick you over to the main menu because that's what happens when you kick back to the title is you go to the main menu. Then we just want to utilize this by actually calling our UI manager, you know, calling the go to UI state anytime we call go to game state and find out what UI we're supposed to be loading by calling this game state dictionary and just passing our game state in. And we should be good to go. We should really never have a game state that doesn't have a UI state. If we do, you know, we can add something for that in later, but at the moment we don't, so that's not something I'm concerned with. All right, so that's all we're gonna cover today. And I hope you enjoyed episode three on how to make an MMR TS in Unity. If you did, like I say every video, I hope you'll check out our Discord, maybe leave a like, comment, subscribe, you know, the usual. You've been on YouTube before, you know how it goes. And see you next time.